Hello, greetings. My name is Aaron. Um, nothing really uh, planned for this video. I was actually just watching um, a Leonard Bernstein, um, who I've become a really big fan of the way that he talks about music and um, and all. It's classical music that he talks mostly, pretty much exclusively about classical music. So I don't um, know the entire scope of what he's talking about. You know, sometimes some of the, the concepts go over my head or um, he's just talking about something that I don't know anything about, um, which is primarily classical music. I don't know a lot about it. I enjoy it um, on occasion. Um, I wouldn't say I'm like a connoisseur of classical music, but there are some uh, certainly some uh, composers and um, specifically like solo pianists. I'm a huge fan of, of uh, solo piano classical music. I try to get into the orchestra stuff or um, um, Bach did um, some really great organ work. Organ's cool. Um, I like a lot of that, but um, yeah, I listened. I was listening to him talk about um, Beethoven's sixth and seventh symphony, and how they are um, uh, quite depressing sounding. Apparently, I'm actually not too familiar with the symphony. I probably should have listened to them before I before I did this. I really only know like his ninth symphony, which is very famous, um, and I just, that's probably about it. Um, I'm not super familiar, especially. I mean, you know, you might know something, but you don't know that you know it. Like you hear it, and you go, "Oh, I know this piece of music," but I don't. I couldn't tell you the name. Um, but yeah, he was talking about Beethoven's Sixth and sem Seventh Symphony and how they have this somewhat depressing, um, longing, uh, bereft sound to use some uh, musical buzzwords. Um, and the man that he was talking with, some Maximilian. Uh, hang on, not. Googling, uh, definitely just Maximilian Schell um, uh, said, oh, he must have been very depressed while he wrote this. And Bernstein said something that is I, th I thought myself and is, was super inspiring and why I'm saying this now. He said um, that's like one of the greatest misconceptions um, of all. Uh, he, he applied it to um, classical composers and all that, but I think you can apply this idea to um, the entirety of music, and that is kind of the myth of the brooding, sad artist creating great art from their brutishness, from their sadness. Um, I think that, yeah, I would 100% agree that that's a total myth, um, because as he says, when you're depressed, he talks about Tchaikovsky and how Tchaikovsky wrote, um, you know, this this piece about when he was f feeling very suicidal, and um, he made a great point, which is if you're feeling suicidal, you're not writing music. You're in bed all day, um, being very, very depressed, severely clinically depressed. Um, and so there's this, there's this idea that people who are performing and writing depressing music, that they must be a very depressed person. And I think sometimes people even get it into their heads, and I've had a tinge of this own idea in my own head, that you almost need... A, an edge of depressingness, of depression in your, not necessarily in your writing, but almost in your own life to, to instantiate like truth within your words. Um, or maybe there's a better way to say that. You kind of like, you, 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 what's the word? You deify, you put like depression almost on like this pedestal as like this suffering that you go through that allows you to then exist with, within the suffering and write about it, which I think is um, is not entirely correct. I think you can write very powerful music about um, sad, depressing, and bereft moments in your life, but only after you're through them. Um, it's kind of something I've experienced in my own life. I've experienced a little bit of you know, sad feelings, um, non, non-belongingness, I suppose you could, you could kind of uh, classify it in that range. And then when I, when I came out of that, I had a desire to write about it, um, and then it's not even necessarily that I didn't have the desire to write about it when I was, um, I did write a lot actually when I was when I was going through it, but it it was like it was incoherent nonsense. I mean, I have this whole um, all poetry page. It's like this um, online poetry submission thing where you submit poetry, and it's, it was basically just a, an outlet for what I was feeling. And the whole thing is just it's kind of hilarious. There's like maybe some jam, like some okay writing in there i mean i i know nothing about poetry or or anything i've read very little of it i don't even necessarily like reading poetry i'm not a huge fan but i do like writing um um and so i would just kind of write and it was all just incoherent nonsense and not incoherent nonsense it was it it there's something that you could pull out of it but it wasn't 
it wasn't a fully fleshed out idea. It was essentially just a collection of, of, um, of, of phrases that you could say in a somewhat poetic way, hoping that it, uh, and it, you know, it had a meaning to me, but that's selfish art. That it's not useful to anybody. It's not, um, it's, it's almost not art to make something entirely for yourself because for something to be art kind of has to exist in the world. And then people have to decide that it's art. Art is one of those weird ethereal words that doesn't necessarily have a def, like a, a defined, a very, very, def, a, it doesn't have a definition. It's just kind of whatever people decide that it is. I mean, it has like this one very technical definition is like art is something that has no use other than itself, which is super, it, I don't like that definition because then, you know, uh, like, um, uh, like a lock of hair that falls out of your head and on and you pick it up you're like oh that's art i mean even the argue even hair you could argue is is art it doesn't really have any use other than just to be hair i mean for us humans we can put hats on or whatever i suppose you could say that it makes you more beautiful but it any anyway it's you know so i've passed the art rant i think i just i heard bernstein say that and I, it was it just it cemented my respect for him even more he's clearly like a super intelligent individual or just you know he's very he's thought a lot about what he does and 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 the people who did it before him one of the greatest things about leonard bernstein is he's not he's just like now starting to compose and he's like 93 years old he's super old he's a he's a literal dinosaur but he's he's he spent his whole life perfecting the works of others and in like expressing his artistry in that way which i think is super interesting and kind of counterculture to what people think that art is he talks a lot about like um glenn gould um who he is not a fan of like at all because glenn gould would play all these classical compositions in non-traditional ways and he's a very polarizing figure in the classical music world um and bernstein just rips him apart it's kind of hilarious um yeah, I'm, I'm indifferent. I don't. I haven't listened to a lot of Glenn Gould's recordings. I tend to agree with Bernstein just because I've heard him talk more and he makes a lot of sense. I haven't really heard Gould. I mean, I can understand Gould's reasoning for wanting to play uh, classical pieces with like a new interpretation or in a new way. But if that's the case, it's almost like, hey, man, just which he did. He made. Um, he did compose his own work, but you know these these works of of musical genius are that and I don't want to say it's disrespectful to play it in a new in a new unconventional way but to maybe it is I don't know I don't know enough about classical music I'm not trained in it so I don't want to speak on that what I do want to say is <laughs> Leonard Bernstein might be a genius and he, he just resonated very clearly with me when he said that because it's so true you don't want to be the depressed artist because if you're the because if, even if you are depressed and you're still writing music, it's probably not very good. Because one of the cornerstones of depression is you have zero motivation to do anything fulfilling. Like, you're not doing anything fulfilling. That's why you're depressed. So you're not doing anything that, you know, makes you want to get out of bed. Um, so your music, even if you're writing music, it's probably not very good. It probably barely wants to make you... Then you wouldn't be depressed. It's almost like this, this self-defeating idea. It's like, if you are depressed, you can't do anything. So... <laughs> How can you write good music? It's you have to get out of your depression, or you don't even ever have to be depressed. I don't want to say like, oh, depression is something you need to go through to write good music. I don't think so. I think we all have certain sufferings in our life that we can write about when we're out of them. It's it's pretty hard, and this could be. Um, I mean, there might be certain things that you can write about when you're in them because you're not. Depression, I think, is a, is a probably a special example because it comes with a certain set of very. Um, uh, non-conducive to writing music consequences. Um, uh, you know, if if a loved one dies and you're not necessarily depressed, you might be able to write about it almost instantly because you can understand that death for what it is and you can rationalize it quickly because you're not depressed. And um, yeah, it's, it's it, was, it was a beautiful thing that he said. And um, I just kind of want, want to put that message out into the world. You know, if you are depressed um, or if you're trying to be brooding i don't know there's just there's this there's this veneration and i think that's the right word of 
of the brooding artist. It's literally like a, a, a cliche. It's not necessarily a cliche, but it's a, it's a trope in, in the music world, and I think it's ridiculous. Um, no one is writing good music who's depressed because they can't. Um, and so if you see an artist and think they have really depressing music, which might be the case, um, but it's not because they are depressed. It's probably because maybe they were depressed at one point or they have friends who were depressed um, and they they see how it works and they're writing about it to shed light on it, which is kind of the whole point of art is to point, point fingers at, at things you see going on in the world and um, unconventional, maybe not unconventional ways, but um, hopefully, hopefully philosophical ways. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all I'll rant about. Leonard Bernstein's great. Everyone should watch more of him. He's real good. <laughs> He's very smart. Even if you don't, um, you know, play classical music, I think he has some great ideas about uh, musicianship and especially piano playing. If you're a pianist, I think it's great to to watch him because he's he's top notch in uh, pedagogy. I think is what they call teaching music, or maybe just teaching people in general. Um, yeah, but that's that. It's Sunday at 1.55 in the morning. I have a new piano coming. I'm going to do a whole video about that. I bought a piano Friday. Friday. <laughs> and it's great. It's an old piano. I don't, I'll probably make a video about it because I'm really excited. Um, but that's that. Uh, I hope everyone has a good week. Good Sunday and then good week. And I'll catch you later.